It's a big day for Intel. It's a big day for everyone in the tech industry. Incoming is the 10th generation of Intel Core processor and with it, it's uh, supporting Z490 chipset. That's 50 motherboards coming our way this year, which I will all review, or most of them, in their own sweet time. And today, we get to unveil them. And for my very first Z490 closer look, uh, I have decided to start off with the all time bestseller motherboard, the most sold and reviewed of them all. The Prime Z490-A from Asus. A motherboard which will define the entire chipset family, the gold standard of the entire industry or so Asus claims. And I know, I know, I do need a haircut. Oh, there. Now, before jumping into the Prime uh, review per se, a little bit of context. The Z490 chipset is Intel's response to AMD's flamboyant and imposing X570 chipset, first of its kind to feature the PCIe 4.0 standard. And with its 3000 series CPU, AMD has been crushing it, deploying not only the PCIe 4.0, which doubles the PCIe 3.0 bandwidth abilities, but also uh, processors with up to 16 physical cores. In comparison, uh, Intel has only PCIe 3.0 enabled processors and up to eight physical core talking of living in an other age. So the stakes for Intel could not be any higher. And the Asus Prime Z490A is a perfect candidate to see if indeed uh, uh, Intel is in good shape or not. It is Asus go-to motherboard uh, for most of the builders out there. Rarely do you see a single product meaning so much for both the largest players in the industry. Feeling the pressure yet? Now, starting with the chipset. The Z490 chipset is both PCIe 3 and PCIe 4 compliant. It will all depend on what CPU you will run it with. If run with the new and latest 10th generation of Intel Core CPU, then the board will run in a PCIe 3.0 standard. But if run with the next year, 11th generation of, of Intel core CPU, then this will unlock our chipset PCIe 4.0 abilities and you will see your board's bandwidth effectively double. For the rest, apart from the Wi-Fi 6 standard addition, there is really not much of a difference between the Z490 chipset and its predecessor. Uh, but the only thing which really did kind of surprise me is the fact that the Prime Z490 chipset heatsink does not have a fan on it. Uh, unlike the AMD X570, pointing at a cooler chipset, a PCIe 4.0 cooler chipset, which, if it is true, is uh, very impressive. But the only way we're going to be able to verify this is by waiting uh, for 2021 and the 11th generation of Intel Core processor to verify the thermal abilities of the Z490 chipset. Board-wise, the Prime Z490A is a six-layered ATX motherboard, two more than on its predecessor. And since this board is predestined to one day be PCIe 4.0 enabled, it makes sense for Asus to do this, even if it means a higher price tag for its consumers. Because having more bandwidth coursing through your PCB veins uh, automatically means stronger signal interferences coming from your motherboard components and that translates in a very unstable product. So by having more PCB layers, we're strengthening the signal isolation, giving us an infinitely more durable and performant product altogether. CPU socket wise, we do have the brand new LGA 1200, which is 49 pins uh, more than its predecessor, uh, the LG1151 CPU socket. But it, that also means that obviously it is not backward compatible and you will not be able to uh, uh, operate 9th and 8th generation of Intel Core processor on Z490 motherboard, which I really, really regret because frankly talking, that new 10th generation of Core processor is in all and for all identical uh, to its predecessor or predecessors simply because it's using the very same Skylake microarchitecture at 14 nanomillimeter uh, lithography. And we did not have to buy a new motherboard 
this very generation in that case. So I really regret that move coming from Intel. But one good news is that the LGA 1200 CPU socket is compatible to all uh, the different LGA 1151 and 1150 CPU cooler out there. VRM wise, well, this is where uh, most board desirability usually lies. We are dealing with 14 45 amps power stages, 12 of which are CPU centric. They are configured in a six twin phases configuration, which is ACES slang for six parallel phases. Question one, will this be enough to operate a 10 physical core processor? And the easy answer is yes. 540 watts of CPU centric power is more than enough to operate it and to even modestly uh, overclock it. So in that case, you're golden, you're fine. Question number two, can this VRM stay cool enough when operating and even overclocking a 10 physical core? And the answer is again, yes. We have two more PCB layers and on the Prime Z390A, meaning a better heat propagation and dissipation rate. And since we have noticeably larger and taller heat sinks, we are dealing with better cooling performances, which gives us a little bit of heat uh, room for a 10 physical core. Memory wise, here we do have one noticeable improvement. The Prime can support up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM in a dual channel configuration. And thanks to its daisy chain memory topology, it is overclockable up to a whopping 4.6 gigahertz, which is noticeably more than available on the Prime Z390A. So a big kudos to Asus because this will have a direct and definite impact onto your system performances. Staying in the memory, we have two M.2 solid set drive, which can transfer up to 32 gigabit per second. Nothing new here, but keep in mind that with next year, uh, 11th generation of core Intel processor, uh, we will have PCIe 4.0 enabled on this board and we will probably see speeds up to 64 gigabit per second. In both cases, these sticks will get really, really hot. And that is uh, why we have the usual padded thermo shield available on that price range. And well placed, uh, I have to say, since uh, the M.2 solid set drive will be most probably trapped under your heat bleeding video card. Export wise, we have six PCIe exports, three bachelors, cause they're single speed. Ah, uh, single slot, I like to call them bachelors. And three 16 slots with different speeds. Only the closest one to your CPU can deliver up to 16 full bus speed, meaning this is where you'd want your video card to be placed for optimal performances. In a dual GPU configuration, our slots will be sharing bandwidth in an eight by eight configuration. And finally, the last one will further share the bandwidth, giving us an eight by eight by four configuration, not exactly what you would want to see for a three way video card configuration. So a good board for a single or dual GPU configuration, uh, hence the metal reinforcements on these two PCIe's. Storage wise, we do have our usual six SATA 3.0 plugs, which can all transfer up to a slow and redundant six gigabit per second. We can send probes to Neptune and Saturn, but we cannot get over the SATA 3.0 standard. Go figure. Back IO wise, first let me note the presence of a padded back IO plate, which was expensive expected, of course, but always nice to see. Starting from the left, we have two display outputs for our integrated graphics, two second generation USB plugs, four 3.2 second generation USB plugs, including a type C, two 3.25 gigabit USB plugs, a 2.5 gigabit LAN, which, you know, is a first for this price range, or at least for the prime series, uh, because usually we're stuck with a single gigabit LAN, so a nice upgrade coming from Asus on this one. And finally, a rather premium S1220 Realtek audio codec, which fully benefits from the six layered uh, PCB configuration of our board because both left and right audio channels have been traced on separated PCB layers, which really increase its isolation capacity and protects it from static interferences. And so especially good when recording and for the ones who do not have a grounded house you know how important that is. Now, there is no Wi-Fi adapter, but we do have a Wi-Fi uh, NIC connector uh, right on our board. And because our Z490 chipset is also uh, compatible to the new Wi-Fi 6-AX standard, we can hope to have up to 2.5 gigabit per second transfer rates, which is sizably more than on the Prime Z390 uh, uh, generation. And, and having this connector here is something I usually see mostly on MSI motherboards. I was quite surprised 
to see it here, but pleasantly so, because it always gives us the opportunity to have um, a, a Wi-Fi upgrade in the future, which is a good idea. So overall, the Bakayo looks fine. It's okay. I just find it a little bit empty. Uh, I would have loved to have seen there a couple more 5 gigabit USB plugs because the Z490 chipset can handle much, much more than presented here. And, you know, go crazy. I had a CMOS or a flashback button would have been really nice troubleshooting wise. But other than that, Asus did take uh, the principles and that's fine. Now, front panel connector wise, we have two second generation plugs, one five gigabit front panel connector and a 10 gigabit type C front panel connector, which is another upgrade compared to its predecessor, the Z390, which had a front panel connector, but only up to five gigabit per second. Let's not forget our Thunderbolt 3.0, which will provide multiple monitor support and transfer up to 40 gigabit per second, a must on every uh, Intel powered motherboard. Fan wise, we have seven PWM fan connectors, including two which can be used for water pumps. So it does have everything uh, uh, you'd need to have a lot of air flow in, in, your, in your build and even operate a one or even two loop custom water cooling uh, configuration. And usually I'd be very happy with that, but I have to admit I'm a bit disappointed because I was expecting that for the Z490 uh, uh, powered motherboard would have hybrid fan connectors. And hybrid fan connectors allows you to connect on every and each individual fan connector, whatever you want, either fans, water pumps, or even a water flow sensor, making uh, boards extremely agile and enthusiast uh, uh, friendly or enthusiastically friendly. But, um, Point is, our Gigabyte has been doing so for the past 18 months, e e equipping or equipping or featuring this on every single board they've been releasing. So I don't understand why Asus missed that. Come on, Asus. Come on. Troubleshooting wise, we do have an easy debugger, which is another first for Prime Z series. Um, and, and which makes sense because when you're gonna operate a PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard, well, next year, you will need to have all the troubleshooting options on your side because with more bandwidth comes more issues. And so the Easy Debugger is a definite welcomed guiding light, I think. And I am also very, very pleased to see a power soldered button, which uh, again is very useful in troubleshooting storm days. Finally, this would not be an Asus motherboard without the tech version of the enlargement pill, namely the RGB. Starting with an RGB strip hidden under the IO roof and one under our chipset heat shield. And because big is not big enough. We also have four RGB connectors, two of which are addressable. In short, if you ever wanted to blow yourself an RGB fest, now you can. Now, in conclusion, the Prime Z490A will cost you about 250 US dollars, which is quite a bit more than its predecessor, the Prime Z390A. So the whole question is, is it worth it? Well, like everything else in life, it's not an easy answer. In our case, we have two scenarios which are equally extreme with extreme answers. Scenario one, if you already have a Z390 motherboard with a ninth generation of Intel processor, <laughs> pass your way. This is not for you. You already have everything that this board can offer you. You do not need to upgrade. I mean, the, the only reason which I would think of is if you absolutely want to go from an eight core processor to a 10 physical core processor, but other than that, you will not have any sizable performance gain coming from the Z390 to the Z490 motherboard processor combo. At least not enough to motivate a full motherboard slash processor upgrade. Just wait for next year and the PCIe 4.0 enabled processors and then maybe it'll, it'll make more sense to upgrade. But if you are with an older configuration or none for that matter and are on the market for a good, well-priced, versatile uh, gamer, well, Asus did a really good job with the Prime Z490A. Um, 
in terms of having a wide spectrum board, which can cater to anyone going from the first time builder, the heavy gamer, and even enthusiasts. And most importantly, the Prime Z490A is PCIe 4.0 compliant, meaning that you are set for a few years in front of you in terms of compatibility and bandwidth. So if you are all in on the 10th generation CPU for a reason or another, and looking for solid performance and somewhat future-proofed motherboard, well, the, the Prime Z490A is probably one of the safest place you money should be.